This is the 25th of March of 2023. I want to pray before we go further. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you to enlighten our understanding while we're studying at your feet. Bless every person that is tuned in. Bless every hungry soul that's searching for you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to attach to every word that proceeds forth in Jesus' name. Okay, the title of this study is, Who Will Be Blessed at His Return? And we're going to read uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 34 to 48 first. Luke 12, 34 to 48. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, findeth, uh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he will gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? <clears throat> Blessed is a servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat his men servants and maidens, and eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looked not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not, and did not commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom uh, men have committed much, of him will they ask the more. Okay, blessed will be the believers if Jesus finds them waiting and watching and ready to serve. Think about that. Blessed are you while you serve others. And that serving doesn't mean just reading the word or studying the word or sharing the word. It means helping others. It means uh, giving a meal when somebody is hungry or something's happening in their family. Take them over a meal. Take them over something to eat. Pray with them. Sit with them. Teach them what you know and all the sort of stuff like that he's talking about. So are you ready? Are you waiting for his call? Are you, are you ready to go with him when he calls his bride out? There's the question. So Jesus is waiting for us to open our heart, okay, to him. So he wants all of you. He doesn't want pieces or parts of you. And in return, he always gives all of himself. Isn't that awesome to know that? Praise you, Lord. So do you want all he has to give? You know, I know I do. That's why I teach. Let me turn. 
pull that chair up. That's why I teach the way I do. I want all of him and I want everyone to have all of him. But you don't know to have all of him if you're not told about what he has to offer and what Holy Spirit stands for, what he gives, how to get him, how to receive him. Okay? So we're going to look at Luke uh, 12, verse 34 and 35 again. And we're going to add in verse 34. I'm sorry, 37 also. So we're going to look at 12, 34, and 35 again. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And then 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. Now, I've read this thing hundreds of times, this passage, and I'm just now getting a revelation because this reminds me of when, remember when Jesus uh, told his disciples to have the multitudes, one was 7,000 and one was 4,000, I believe, to sit down in groups Okay, and then he gave them baskets to serve to the, to the people. That's what it reminds me of. But this is saying that he will gird himself. See, when you look at the, the way that the wording is here. Now, I know when it's capital H, I know talking about him, Jesus, or him, God, right? Um, but this doesn't have a capital H, so I've read over it many times and thought that it was the servant's serving the master right but he said verily i say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them what he's saying is jesus will be the servant and he will serve isn't that awesome like i said it's a light bulb moment but it didn't it didn't occur to me um as a switch being let on. It was just something that I should have known. But reading this, like I've just said, with the small e, you just, whoop, like I did, whoop over it. And I'm taking the whole story in, but I'm never focusing on the he part. You know, he will, uh, he shall gird himself. Well, this is what a servant does, wraps a towel around him, gets himself ready, to serve the food, the meal, in other words, put the towel around him. Remember where Jesus um, took off his outer clothing, put a towel around him. It says girded himself with a towel. And he came, he, in other words, he made himself a servant, put himself in a servant position. And he sat down and washed the disciples' feet. Remember that? So what he's saying here, and what you're going to find out when I read in Matthew the same thing, he's making himself a servant. Now, he's told us this over and over, but I just didn't catch on up here. He will be serving. And this is what he's saying he will do. He will gird himself and make them to sit down. He's going to make his servants to sit down, the ones that served him on this earth, in other words, to sit down, and he's going to feed them. Isn't that awesome? Praise Jesus. Praise you, Father God, for sending Jesus and for Jesus' sacrifice on that tree and for making a way back to you, for shedding his blood, that when we repent, you see us through his blood. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for making that clear. In Jesus' name, thank you. So this is what he's saying. Um... So we're going to look at the word gird. One says gird in verse 35, and in 37 it's gird it, I mean 35, and gird it. Is it G-I-R-D-E-D -E in 35, and verse 37 is G-I-R-D. Oh, it means to make yourself ready. That's the simplest explanation that I can give. The simplest way I can understand, too, in fact. So remember, uh, a servant is humble, does nothing out of selfish ambition, nothing for himself. He's not doing it, and he's not serving to be uh, given something. He's serving it from his heart. 
It's not for a selfish ambition. That's all you can say about it. Or conceit. Okay. A servant thinks of others more than himself. Jesus is our in sample and in example. I'm going to explain that to you in a few minutes here. But uh, so he shows us that he didn't do it to get fame and glory. I mean, that's obvious, right? And if it, if he did come for fame and glory, he sure passed up a whole lot of um, a whole lot of ways he could have been. And that goes into a rabbit trail because then I start thinking about uh, when he's coming in on a donkey. And uh, the people have their clothes. They put them down on the ground for him and the donkey to walk across. And while donkey's walking, he's riding on the donkey, the colt of a donkey. So um, you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure, by now. And the people are saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And they have these um, palm branches and they lay them down in the streets for the donkey to walk on. It's just awesome. So I'm not going to go that trail i'm going to stay on this trail jesus being a servant and how he is showing his believers how to be and what he expects out of them okay so in those days um the servant was the property of the masters okay just like a slave and then uh the what is it when the slaves came to america they were um brought over in fact they were sold by their leaders and Dan always says, watch Kunta Kinte, the movie. But he say in history, which uh, the leaders of this country nowadays don't want you to know that, and the black leaders don't want you to know that the black people over in Africa in that area there, they were uh, sold by their tribal leaders. So they became slaves of uh, plantation owners. Okay, and I have to say, through history and what I've learned, those plantation owners or the owners or the masters, in this case, of the slaves, were treated more like employees, and then they be, some of them became family. I mean, I'd say for the majority of them, it became family because they worked for the master, and the master was good to them. And then by the time, and I can't remember the year, you know, the time that um, uh, President Lincoln was running, and... Uh, freed the slave you know that's you can look into that history yourself because that's between the north and the south and the fighting you know the yankees and all them you know when they went down to free the slaves emancipate the slaves so the slaves themselves didn't want to leave their employer or their master they didn't want to leave they were treated too good they didn't want to leave which was awesome because you know those people that were in those positions of slave masters are going to stand in front of Almighty God on Judgment Day, or one day they will be judged, and they'll have to give account of how they treated their employees or their slaves or their servants, whatever you want to say about them. And nowadays, uh, there's slavery is still going on in other countries. It is going on, and if it does happen in the United States, it's because we have to work for an employer. So you might as well say we're still enslaved to the government. We're just working for someone called an employer. Now just think about that. Okay. Uh, but slave owning is illegal. Even though it's practiced some places around the world still. But um, like I said, that's another rabbit trail. You can go study that on your own and do your own video on that. So, but in the days, like I said, the slaves were uh, the servants were the properties or the property of the masters of truth. Okay? In those days, they were legally required to do whatever the master needed. Okay? So they would do things like plant the crops, um, look after sheep, uh, prepare and serve meals, so anything that needed to be done in the house or on the plantation or on the farm, in other words, they, they were responsible for doing. So in turn, the masters took care of them, like I'm just telling you. They made sure they had food and, and what they needed. Praise God for that. 
Now remember, Jesus is our in sample, and I know a while back when I was still in Akron, I did a video on Jesus being our in sample and our example. <clears throat> so I'm just going to slightly um, talk about that here, right, just for a few seconds, and let you know again, remind you that an example, E X A M P L E, is a sample, a type, a model, someone or something to be copied or to learn from. And that fits very well into the study here. And the in-sample, E-N-S-A-M-P-L-E, is an example and a model. And once again, that fits perfectly into the model and example that, that we're talking about right now and what Jesus gave. So we're going to also look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. I am so I am so grateful that uh, Holy Spirit revealed this to me. Okay, Matthew. It hey, hey, went too far. Uh, twenty twenty-five to twenty-eight. But Jesus called them unto him and said, "Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority over them." But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, will let him be your minister. And like I said, that minister means servant. It means slave. So depending on how you're using the word, you can use it interchangeably if you want to. But nowadays, it's minister. And we still use the word servant. Like servant, an example is in the churches or in our homes. Because we, have, we employ people to do those things. Or there's this person in the church that wants to do for others. Or that is doing for others. Okay, so that's, that's what you have to remember. And whosoever will be a chief among you, let him be your servant. Okay, in other words, doing for others. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, through these scriptures, we can see how we are supposed to be and to act and uh, what's expected of us as children of God. Okay, uh, so we're going to look at verse 28 again. Matthew 20, verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life for a ransom for many. Hallelujah. That is exactly why he, he hung on that tree. And I know I've said this before, but I'll repeat this again. It's not in my notes, but I'm going to tell you uh, a vision that I was given. It's awesome. Holy Spirit is so awesome. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I seen Jesus hanging on the tree. I seen his hands, and it's not through here, it's through here. It's through his wrist. And his feet were like this. Imagine that. This is the heel. It's like this. And through that soft part, but right above the heel, there's a spike. That's why you needed two of the shorter spikes and one longer spike. Exactly. And that went through the top of his heel all the way through the tree, all the way through the other part of the heel out. The other part of the other side of his of his foot or above his heel and and I thank God I really do that he took away that gore in the mess that was Jesus at the time because remember by then he was beat with cattails and he was beat with nine and tens nine arms uh, but they're cat and tails and on the end of the cat and tails and I know Way back when I was in Akron, I did another study on, on what that meant. And that means the, there were shards of glass, shards of metal. It was just claws-like. Whatever was in the bottom of these things, about in the bottom of the whips. And the whips had several protrusions out of the whips. And uh, another thing about that is, through Roman law, the one doing the whipping, or the executioner, was not allowed to whip the uh, prisoner any more times than 39, uh, what is it, 39 times, 38, 38 times, sorry, 38 times. Now I'll have to look that up again. I might, if I remember, I'll put that in the description. 
because there's a certain point if he goes over that point that executioner is going to be the one on that pole being hit with those cat ties cat and tail cat nine the cat tails you know and somebody else can tell me the exact name because I know I'm not I'm not giving the exact name at this point but I looked down through my list and I at that time a while back I did a whole uh, video and I included that when I included the uh, Christ, Christ cross and how he was crucified whoa but anyhow like I was saying uh, God gave me a vision where I seen him on the, the, the tree hanging there I see my face over it over his and then I see more faces go over and over mine faster and faster they got and uh, then a light bulb went off and I understood that Jesus had not only me on his mind when he was hanging on that tree he had from the everyone from the beginning of time to the end of time. Remember, God, Father Yahweh, He's outside of time, so there is no time or space or distance. So just just knowing that and understanding that He lives outside of time, because He made time. But this is the vision that I was given: that everyone from the beginning of time to the end of time, Jesus had on His mind while He was dying, while He was hanging there. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, is all I can say. Thank you is never going to be enough. That's all I all I ever have to say. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 20, verse 16 now. Okay, so the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Now remember that. I'm going to say it again. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. He wants everyone to be his ministers. We all have a mission when we came here. It's a heart issue. Do you want to do it or not? Just like do you want to accept Christ or not? He gave us free will and, and free uh, choice. Then he tells us in Proverbs, with all your understanding, or with all your learning, get understanding. I mean, with all your learning, get understanding. Thank you, Father, for that. So the ones that people all too often all too many times they look down on are the folks that serve us you know like when you're going to a restaurant and you think boy they got a menial job you know they don't mean nothing and now uh, a lot of people disrespect the servers better think again especially after what I'm uh, bringing forth here okay so are you catching my thoughts by now I think about what Jesus and the disciples endured and that has been going on for centuries. You know, we that love Jesus and Holy Spirit, truly, we know, I guarantee that you've been ridiculed and persecuted and looked down upon and laughed at. But that's okay. That's okay because you know who you serve. And you know where your soul is going once you come out of this body. Because see, the spirit never dies. That's why I don't like using the word die, D-I-E. Because we can say it when we say that word die because or death or dead on earth because it 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 uh, embodies that the body itself the physical body is deceased. Okay, that doesn't mean that the spirit and soul are dead. That means that the body died and then you came out of it. Your true self came out. Ooh, thank you for that knowledge, Father. Okay. So are you ready to serve? And that's the question. Now, you're actually an ambassador when you accept Christ. Being a follower of Christ, you are literally his ambassador. And we're going to look at what ambassador means. Okay? And then truly all believers are God's ambassadors. It's if you want to do it or not. Excuse me. I get to talking and um, I get dry. Let's see. Um, so we're going to look at what that means. An ambassador for Christ is a special agent called to proclaim and to direct to obedience and to live a life full of testimonies of faith and commitment. So an ambassador for Christ means you represent Christ Jesus. And, all there is to it. 
Okay, in conclusion, throughout these passages, Jesus is saying, true greatness doesn't come by flaunting your authority. And we see that a whole lot, don't we? In ministers, one starts with an A and his last name starts with an S. Another one is begin beginning letter of his first name, J, and his last name begins with a J. Those are just two examples. I don't want to be dinged, so I don't want to um, say out his name. So, no. Okay, instead, they become great by serving as a slave or as a servant does. Okay? Jesus, like Jesus, just as Jesus did for us. He's our in sample and our ex sample, like I just said. So this uh, message goes along with Psalms 37, four, uh, verse 4 and 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So once you know his will, you're inside of his will. You stay inside of his will, which means you stay humble, you stay repentant, and you stay under the blood covenant of Christ. So you can be in his will, and you can do the things that he requires you to do and asks you to do. Because remember, they... Father God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit will never, never force themselves on you. So it's a heart issue. That's all there is to it. And there's one thing that I left out of my studies that I wanted to go, I wanted to show you. It's in Revelation chapter 3. I think it's... Hmm. Okay, let me see if I find it here. Okay, I'm sorry. It's Revelation chapter 3, verse 20. And I would definitely put this in here. Because this is what uh, Jesus is doing. And I don't know why I forgot to write it down. But it says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and sup with him and he with me. So I'm going to read down from, I'm going to read from 19 to 22, I believe. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. See, like I've said, I also did a, uh, a video when I was up in Akron um, about Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 3. And the title of that is a serious, something, something to do with a serious warning. And I think that's probably what I put on there. Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 3 a ser is a serious warning. Something to that effect. Uh, look down my videos and you'll see it. Now, Jesus' warning is over and over and over is how to be, how to do uh, what he expects out of us. That he expects us to repent and accept his son Jesus as our Savior. Which is awesome. But like I've been saying this whole time, and I've done videos on that too, you don't, and, and a lot of posts on, on uh, Facebook, you can look at them also. Jesus expects us to stay humble, repentant, and under the blood covenant of Christ. Right? If you love Jesus, you're going to do his commandments. That's not to say that we're supposed to be under the commandments and do all the laws. That's done away with. But they are guidelines for us. That is true. And it is also true that it takes Holy Spirit to draw a person. But there's more to being a child of God than just saying, I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior. 
And you can go back and listen to my last couple of videos. I'm pretty sure that I've uh, mentioned that also in there. Father Yahweh, we thank you for teaching us at your feet again. Thank you for all the hungry souls that study with me. Please give us all your revelation. Keep us under your wings. Cover us with the blood covenant of Jesus. Holy Spirit, please attach to every word of this message and upload this video quickly without any problems. Open the spiritual eyes of everyone that is searching for you, Father. Bless their hearts in Jesus' name.